But we have another special guest in the building today, man. Y'all might have, if y'all don't know him from online, you know what I'm saying? You might have seen him with, with Josiah, with the, the shortest podcast ever. You might have seen him backstage around NXT doing stuff. Yeah. You might have, you might have ran, you might have wanted to smoke with him on, on, you know, WWE 2K. He probably whooped your ass. You don't want that. Like you. We. <laughs> I had to apologize. <laughs> so my fault. Hey man, we got the good brother Cornell Gunter in the building with us, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on now. Of course for the yeah. you do it right here. You do it right here. Thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all having me out here. Like for real, for real. Um, I'm very thankful uh to be sitting here talking to y'all. 250, by the way, congratulations. That's thank not small, you, you know what I'm saying? That's an amazing milestone, amazing accomplishment. So uh thank y'all again and many blessings and positive vibes for a 250 mo and a 250 more after that, then a one thousand after that. We get to a thousand. I don't know what I'm I'm gonna come here like damn Ric Flair <laughs> with the day. <laughs> he's gonna be he's just gonna be airdropped for hell <laughs> I mean, you got a stack of money in here, so by one thousand, you gotta have like a, a couple, like multiple stacks. They throw them, they throw them shit in the air. Um, she might be, she's not wrong with the the, the, with the air drop. I really might be carrying the crowd. Air drop is crazy. I could really just see Eve like pulling up to like this. <laughs> Honestly, bro, that's not a bad idea. You, you, you know how Soldier Boy is sound the first rapper. You might be the first podcaster ever to drop through the sky on a GoPro podcasting on a you know what I'm saying podcast hey, on a GoPro. Come on now. Hey, hey, God did. Come on now. Hey. <laughs> don't, don't give me the idea. I don't like that. No, wait, don't like that. <laughs> You can just go say anything that says God did after. Like, you can't debate that. Like, you just yeah. can't. Yeah. Hey, like, 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 like Callie said, God did. That's hey. real shit, man. But let's get into it, man. Let's, let's talk about what Cornell did. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, you, you, had, you had the way he changed his voice. That like, game Corn- crazy. Like that. Yeah, that was hard. Hey, hey, you, you definitely got some VC over there. Yo, 99 right now. Go ahead, play. You see the V drop? <laughs> Not you see the VC right here. <laughs> I'm tell you, not what can this get me in this eye? So you're you're a 2K developer, right? No, 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 no. I am not a developer. You are not gonna have my teammates kick my head in. I am nah. So I'm in marketing uh, for 2K. I mostly am over uh, debit 2K and PGA tour. Uh, so yeah, that's more so where I'm at. I'm in the space of, you know, live services. So everything after the game comes out, it's time. Like, so there's no off season for me, uh, yeah. from start to finish one to a million, basically that's just what I'm running. And it's great. It's fun, fun times. How is it with the PGA? Cause I, that's new. Like 2K. Yeah. That's, that's never been done before. I think with 2K, that's what uh, PJ has always been what EA. No. Nah, so 2K had, a. Uh, Two uh, PGA two K twenty one PGA Tour two K twenty one, um, and basically it's like a two year cycle. So then uh, that went by. So now this one is two K twenty three. Uh, EA has uh like uh the PGA Tour stuff too, but they have like the Masters and all that stuff. So that's like the difference. But two K got Tiger Woods, you know Stephen Curry, you know Top Golf, you know a uh, diamond to Top Golf. So uh, we can all hop online right now and go play Top Golf. Um, you know. And you know, I, I I can go ahead and get like you ever been to Top Golf before? Yes, I haven't had the chance to go to Top. I wanted to go for like my birthday, but yeah. I'm going to New Orleans. When, when your birthday? September. September. All right, when so it's already birthday. passed. Yeah. All right, bet. And I, I I'm gonna send you a late birthday present. I, I'm I'm we gonna send you to Top Golf. Hey man, come on now, don't don't make Aww. me cry, brother. No, we're gonna sing in the top golf, and then after yeah, you go to gotta, top golf, get him, bro. <laughs> but, but no, no, because it's two fifty, so we gotta go big, right? So you're gonna sing in the top golf, then after you go to top golf, you're gonna play PGA Tour two K twenty three. Tell us the tell us how your experience went. Just, I, I, I'm not biased because you're just gonna tell us how your experience went. That's all. I ain't gonna hold you. Don't get me a top. Don't threaten me with a good time. I'll be a top. I'll go. Stupid in top golf, boy. Man, oh, listen. No. All, all, I, all I know is you better self shoot <laughs> stuff. You better self shoot stuff and let us know that you was there. And let us know you're having a good time. I'm oh, for real. So whenever you ready to go to top golf, let me know. Cash app always hey. ready. Hey, I'm gonna hold you to that. The same way you said the God did thing. God did. Come on. Now. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, man, nah, um, man, it's a wonderful time. And, you know, as we talked about WWE 2K, that's like my baby. Uh, WWE 2K 22 is out right now. Um, fun time. I, I've collected a lot of bodies. I kind of step open them on the way to sitting in my chair because it's like all mm-hmm. over here in my game room. But uh, a lot of bodies. I hand out a lot of L's. I rarely take any. So uh, fun time. You said you rarely take any. So do you yeah. know how many times you've lost? Like, do you know Six what times. the record is? Damn. Six times. Yeah, yeah. Out of how many times. games? Because I said off bat. So, so on- online. So, like, online, I won, like, 200-plus games. And I probably lost about 15, if that. Uh, but like against my friends, my friends have only beaten me like six times, and that's like counting my whole entire friend group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Now and I, now, sometimes they don't like playing with me because they're like, "Oh, you're not having fun." I'm like, "I am having fun. You're a loser. <laughs> it's a great time for me." You're a loser. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I, I am literally the most competitive person you will ever see in your life when it comes to video games, um, and it doesn't make any sense. It's probably unhealthy and a bit like borderline, like psychotic. But I'm totally okay with that. Damn. We well we, before we uh before we got on the air, we was talking. You said you used to hoop. Were you like that when you was on the court also? Yeah, so basketball, yeah. I, I so I went at my high school, so I've been i I was six foot in like fourth grade. Right. So I've been Shut up. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta hit them. <laughs> Is this true? Yeah, no, we're talking about yeah, so fourth grade, I was six foot. I even had I had like a little light, clearly not this, but I had like a super light, like like look like I put dirt on my on my face type mustache. I've been I've been a big a big kid my whole life. In I can only grade? imagine mm-hmm. the other children. In yeah, yo, yo, so like, like so, so like I, I would get twenty nine. Yo, yo, I would get on elementary school bus. They'd be like, "You're not going to high school." I'm like, no, I'm mm-hmm. going to fourth grade. They'd be like, what the? Aww. So, and then, like, at that mm-hmm. time, too, like, fourth grade is, like, really when, like, sports and everything kind of changed for me. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so my cousin, J.R. my cousin, J.R. Smith, so he's hooped all his life. Uh, and then my oldest brother, um, he also hooped all of his life. But our family, we just hooped. Uh, so, like, at that time, I, first time I played, like, organized basketball, AAU, um, back when YBOA was a thing. Um, and I was just a big, a big ass boy on the basketball court, not knowing nothing. I was just out there, just look like uh, I can't, I don't want to compare me to no NBA player. No, I can't do that. So, I'm just out here just looking, I'm just looking lost, you know what I'm saying? That's just I'm looking lost. Uh, but over time, I, by sixth grade, I got, I got, I got with it, you know, ended up going to like, the top camps in the nation starting in middle school and in ninth grade i had a a, a letter of interest from like lsu and all that kind of stuff too so a lot of stuff was mm-hmm. like starting to boom for me and then that you get into high school you get your first letter of interest you get a couple more little d2 okay. low d1 you, you start like oh i'm the man and then you don't take care of your body then everything is kind of just like it goes it goes kind of sideways but then you know you, you still find purpose in everything that you do right shit that's life man yeah mm-hmm. of course of course that's still insane though. Six feet tall in the fourth grade. That's yeah. And you know That's fourth it. grade, like they got the 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 short rims. Yes, so I, I was on there. Me. I was on there. Listen, bro, the first time it, it was fourth grade, it was fifth grade. I'll never forget this. It was field day, last day of school. I banged Ooh. on this fifth grader so hard, bro. <laughs> I, I I had on a Converse. I had a Converse jersey on with the matching shorts. It was like it was the top was white, navy blue. It had a little silver in it with a big old Converse star in the middle. I'll never forget it. Bro, that was, at that point in time, that's when like basketball went from being like, "Oh, this is cool," to like, I'm yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, like I, I, I think I can do this. And I remember, like, bro, so like I was playing basketball. Like I would go to school. I used to play violin. People don't. A lot of people don't even know this. Ooh. I played violin in elementary school, and then I was like, "Yeah, I want to go play basketball." And it was like, "No," and I was like, "Why? You get to the violin practice." I said, "No, I don't. I'm done." I don't want to play no more. My mom was like, you can't just quit. My dad was like, well, if you want to go play, you got to go play. But my dad yeah. is like, my dad is one of the toughest critics in the world. He's a great dad, but he's like, oh, you doing this? Oh, we're doing this. Like, he's he's uh-huh. in it nonstop, which is, which is good because it made me, like, never settle for just want to be less than. Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, the, <laughs> my first AAU team, I went to, I was in fifth grade at that time with this, his, uh, with his son named CJ. He was like, hey, uh, my dad has a basketball team. You want to come play? I'm like, yeah, of course. I don't want to hoop. So they called my house. Man, so like, I, I come from a household, a black household with a father. Um, and you know, like, uh, ha, certain things, you know, like, oh, my, my dad don't play t- type of parents. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was my dad. He don't play. So for the fact that another another grown individual called my house asking to speak to me to come play basketball, 
Yeah, he was not happy. So right. he, he yeah. it was like it was like five or six o'clock on a Sunday when he called. My dad took me out to this court. And it's like seven, eight o'clock at night, and he's like, "Let's, I want to see you can play. Show me what the hell you got. Let's go." Cursing me out, and I'm out there like, "Oh, I just want to play basketball." So then the little lights would pop on, and my mom was like, "Phil, leave him alone." He's like, "No, he want to. Let's see." So we played the seven. I won seven zero, and he left me alone after that. So it was great. See? Nah, see, as as a dad, I'm like, ah, right, you got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would be like, my fault, OG. <laughs> I, I looked. I looked at it. I was like, "God, yeah, there you go." Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, man, and, and that's that's kind of how my journey started. And it's crazy. So, like, as my love for WWE 2K was a thing, but back then it was like NBA Live. So, I I used to live in this apartment complex right outside this park. And, like, back then, like, Jeremiah Rivers, who's Austin Rivers' brother, mm -hmm. um, and Austin Rivers' autumn used to come out there because I'm from Winter Park, you know. So they, everybody used to come out there, all the high schools from Lake Howe, like Chandler Parsons, all these all come to this park. We always just hoop. My dad and my oldest brother would be like, anybody play NBA Live? Yo, my little brother would beat you right now, $20, $30. And my dad, they grown men, with our people would literally come to our, our apartment, leave the door wide open, I would play them, wax them, five-minute quarters, and be done. And then they just... Next, next, next. So it's 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 that was bad. I just realized that was that was really bad. Why would they do that to me? But it was fun. It was fun. They had you whooping niggas ass on on the sticks, and you're uh, still doing it. However many years later, man. Wow. That's the only, only thing I know, my kids will never do me like that. I'll never go out like that. <laughs> <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Hey. You saying that now, 20 years from now, like, it's, it's going to be straight VR. Your kids are going to smoke you in Madden VR, dog. Listen, I, I'll pull out any. I'll pull out a PS3. <laughs> Listen, behind me, I got a PS1, 2, 3, 4, and I got a, I got a 5 right here. I got Xboxes. Uh, Nintendo Switch, I got a Wii U. Like, I'm going to win at something. And when I do, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, <laughs> Probably literally bring you his Xbox console. What you, what you yes. know about this big dog? Hey, hold on, hold on. Hey, how, what how I much? Say? Hey, how much you want for that? I don't know. I gotta say a million. <laughs> nah, I'm for real. Hey, <laughs> you got you, you got you got you got the uh, oh, you, you, got the, you got the jack. You got the jack in the power cord and all that. I think I still do, and I, I might have Madden 05 in here still. I don't care about that. The game I want for that is Bruce Lee. <laughs> Listen, I, I tell me how much you want. I swear to, I swear to, Cash App always ready. Just know that. So whenever <laughs> I'm with it, I will send you that money immediately and for next day shipping. I am not playing. We are gonna make so we are gonna work something out, man. We gonna talk. Bet if you don't do that, we'll block you. God did. Right, <laughs> <laughs> Add another one. That's a fact. <laughs> no, nah, like um, you doing your thing at 2K right now, but yeah. you used to be in WWE. Can you tell the listeners what you used to do in WWE before I confront you with some <laughs> WWE questions? <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, blessed and highly favored to be a uh, student of the game on uh, underneath Triple H and his team at the Content Innovation Lab at WWE for about half years uh some of the greatest time of my life um well what i what we covered there me and my team we cover production so we filmed and edited a lot of uh you know documentaries tryouts uh tv segment like tv vignettes promos for tvs anything backstage like when you see somebody walking through the parking lot on nxt television uh the team that i was on we filmed that we also did stuff like matt riddle's uh documentary on the peacock same with tomaso champa tegan knox uh man cinematic matches so like the boneyard match you know that one mm -hmm. that slammy so what that would technically make me a slammy award winner yeah. if that match won and i was part of God did, um, but also oh like Tommaso, <laughs> but also like Tommaso Ciampa versus Gargano, Adam Cole cinematic match. Um, there was another cinematic match. Oh, Cameron Grimes and uh, Dexter Loomis. Um, all of like you know the team that was on also filmed like all of the uh, the prime target stuff too. So a lot of amazing stuff. There, there are there are there's one time on TV like towards the end. <laughs> towards the end of television uh, well Adam Cole and Kyle are going at it like this like the go home for their match or whatever like the blow off where Kyle ended up going over and Adam ends up leaving and I'm filming stuff for Prime Target and I'm literally in the shot so you see two they going crazy and you see me in the background like this <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so then, next thing you know, uh, somebody who's worked on the on floor production team, it was Blake. I just feel I, I see me to do, ooh, I get pulled back behind the curtain. It's like, you're in the shot. I'm like, oh, shit, my bad. So then, next thing you know, uh, the funniest thing is that I see Sean and, and I'm in H the next day, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, and Sean's like, <laughs> Like man, it's all good. But ever since then, Sean, every time he sees me, like maybe that one time you ruined the shot on TV. I'm like, Sean, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. But which That's is crazy because my, my first day on the job, I'm at the PC, uh, and I'm sitting at this big old table inside the CIL, and I just got my AirPods in. I'm like, I'm not bothering nobody. I'm gonna sit. Yeah, I'm gonna speak when I'm spoken to. And somebody's like, all I hear was like. Hey, can you the TV in here? And I'm like, yo, that's Sean Michaels. Yo, I know he ain't talking to me. Yo, I'm not gonna mess with this man at all. Mm-hmm. And he comes up and like, tap. Hey, I'm like, yes, Kim. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay. Here I come. Here I come. <laughs> so I go in there. No, all I did was all I did was just um the uh, mirror the screen from my MacBook to the TV, and he thought I was the coolest person after that. I said, well, well, I thank you. I thank you so <laughs> much, sir, because I love you so much with all my heart and soul. <laughs> So, man, it, it, it's examples like that is the time that I had at the PC, man. So it was, it was great. That's it was fire. fire. That is fire. Shouts to Sean for thinking you was a, a wizard or something. For, you for you bro, IP. bro, I, I text I te- my homies like, dog, I just hope Sean with the TV. I, he <laughs> my dog now. Like, like we here. So, man, nah, and I mean, I think everybody from top to bottom, even like Triple H, man, there's a lot of stuff that uh, I got to see Triple H too in real time. And I was like, yo, how the hell do you see that? Like, I, the fact that um, where it was, I think it was SummerSlam, I saw him and Vince uh, put together that Fiend uh, entrance in real time. Wow. And I was just like, hello? Or the fact that I see, I, I even seen them put together like Hit Row stuff in real time, being in terms of like light and you go here and you go here. Like literally, Hunter, he'll talk to the talent, he'll walk away, he'll talk to the crew and be like, hey, yeah, so do this light right here. Yeah, do that right here. All to that while, while also looking back, talking to the talent, and next thing you know, do it again. And it's, it's magic. I'm like, how do you do this? Wow. And it's like, man, listen, man, a lot of people, I talked about this on the A show, like, I think it was like almost, like almost a year ago, when the talk of like Hunter at the PC and 2.0 stuff was coming into play, and people was like, oh, he got fired. No, man. Like, I was in that meeting with Vince and everybody, you know, and Hunter already spoke about it with Ariel and all that kind of stuff, but it's one of those things where it's like, that man know what the hell he doing, and if he don't, mm-hmm. hey, whoever thought he didn't, look at him now. Facts. Yeah. A- a- everybody want to work for him. You know, so it's just one of the things, too, where it's just like a lot of stuff that I saw in real time from that man. I was just like, how? Like, h- how are you able to see it? Right. Like, like in, in like, for instance, like for him to be able to like, oh, let me think, let me let me think of somebody that there was somebody's entrance that I thought that was freaking incredible. The hunter was at a EO. So when EO turned on Candace, right after the whole cage match thing situation and she comes back out, we have NXT tape at full sale. To if we going through rehearsal and he's doing her entrance and originally her lights wasn't as crazy as it was, man. That man said, "Hold on, da, 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 da. yo, yo, you come out, do you have to, you know, be you, get into it, embrace it, be become a character, and then you go on what you do your thing. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of the rest of this." And that man, she came out on TV, and I was like, "Hey, hold on, that that wasn't what what you just did, dog." Like how money man and he just man that man's just different he's he's also just a great human being you know just top to bottom great human being i had a tragic loss last year and and i talked to him and i talked to stephanie they called me and my wife and talked to him. uh when i first came back to television after the loss of my son he pulled me he was talking to him he was talking to talent taking care of anything he said hold on let me talk to you and and made sure that i was good and he made sure that he let me know that he was happy that i was back and i you know somebody like me is kind of like you know i just feel like i'm just you know i'm just gonna do my job i ain't you know what i'm saying i ain't trying to work for mm-hmm. nothing but mm-hmm. the fact that you know he would take the time it wouldn't, it wouldn't have to it would be anybody he would just take the time i looked enough anybody went through that situation he would have did the same thing so my love for him is endless endless oh, wow. amazing that's dope of him, for real, for real. He's a real one, and that's why, you know, for me, it's like people see it now because it's, you know, you know, the AEW WWE stuff, mm-hmm. it doesn't exist, right? It only exists online to people that entertain it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if it did exist, you look at him now. Now he has, you know, nuclear type weapons where he can go ahead and have a great time on what he's doing, and look, it's like masterpiece after masterpiece after masterpiece, and it's like, man, that that man. 
greatest of all time. Like he, he, for me personally, he got into that conversation when I got to see him create. And I, I, mm-hmm. I'm somebody I like to create. I love to do like content creation. That's what I do at my job. A lot of different things. And it's like seeing him do do shit in real time. I said, nah, that's I, I need to get like that. So nah, he mm-hmm. different. That's funny you said that because I was well, that was gonna be my next question is like what what did you see like because I'm sure like under the learning tree of Triple H mm-hmm. and Shawn Michaels I'm sure you've seen a lot you know what I'm saying so what's like what's something that you like took from them like specifically that was like oh, this guy you know he did this thing in particular it could be like the smallest of things but it made the biggest difference you know what I'm saying like what's from, something that you took from them that shoot you, from like, H them? from H it was the ability to think of something and then say okay does that work no well here's four more ideas do these work no well here's three more ideas and it's like the fact that he never stopped and i think that's something for, like when we did the boneyard match bro like a lot of that stuff was just like straight through like the vision that he had was like yo so all right y'all ready to do this let's roll Da-da-da-da-da. all right cool hold on so you're like when we do when we do the shot of like uh Gar- um, gallows and anderson coming out with the with the with the druid or whatever mm. and that, that 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 nice little swivel corner shot where you see like taker like the reveal of carl anderson and, and the druids or whatever and that's you know taker knocks them out he turns to look at aj and the house is behind him it's all he thought all that shit up on the fly and it's like a lot yeah. of people they take their time and they shoot all that he's like no it's like boom we gotta go and a lot of stuff he wanted to do in one take and that's one thing that i loved about him because he was like I want to do stuff in one take, if not one, then two. But like he definitely wants to. He was pushing everybody to be great. Now clearly, if you again, if you can't get it in one take, he's completely about it. But he just pushed you to want to make sure you capture your best shot first, and then run it back again. But he he, he just pushed you to be great, and that's just something like man. I, I can't say I can't say I can't say, I can't say any, any more good thing. I I, I, I honestly I can't say nothing bad because you get you gave me opportunity to feed my family. You gave me opportunity to achieve my mm-hmm. dream. You gave me. You, you took me around the world to see so many things. I did road loops and live events and work pay-per-views and COVID, like COVID at the freaking PC. I was able to work Raw, SmackDown, and NXT all in one and be able to work with Vince or some stuff. And you able to do the Boneyard match, the Undertaker's last match. It's like, what more can I say? You know what I'm saying? So everything. If, I, if one thing I take from it, it's everything. It's, but truthfully, the one thing you take from it, just like just try to be a good person to everybody and then put your time in and it, it'll come. Like from um that era that of NXT, like we see it's now in the like 2.0s and move forward and everything like that. From the part that you spent in NXT, who was your favorite wrestlers around that time? Oh, that's easy. EO, uh Bianca, like like I, I'm a, I'm heavy on the women's wrestling side, so like EO and Bianca, uh Candice. Uh, definitely Dakota Kai, uh, Tegan Knotts. Uh, when it came to the men, like Keith Lee at that time, especially during that COVID time, when he had that run from like, from like right before Survivor Series to like past Mania, when he ended up beating Adam Cole, became the double champ and everything. Mm-hmm. That was some of the stuff I I was blown away. One because. You look at Keith Lee, the stereotype is, oh, he's a big guy, so you can't do X, Y, Z. He already, def- he already defeats the stereotype. He's also black, right? So you don't think like you would live in an industry where African-Americans sometimes don't always get their due, and he was kind of getting his due. But then you saw him doing the NXT, but then Vince saw him on the Raw SmackDown stage and said, oh, no, this guy is good. And then you go you go to Chicago for Survivor Series, and him and Roman Reigns are the, are the last two, sorry, are the last two, and then he gave Roman a run for his money. And then you go to Houston, and he's in the ring with Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Brock Lesnar go, oh, this is a big boy. Whoa. <laughs> and then and then you come out of that, and then you come out of that, and he beats Adam Cole for both titles. And it's like, man. Yeah. And, like, for me, for me, it's like that kind of stuff is different because he moved mountains. And granted, it wasn't for X amount of time. If Keith Lee would have had – if Keith Lee would have had both titles, like if he'd have to relinquish the North American title, but Keith, if he would have had a run for, let's say, five or six months instead of like a couple of weeks or whatever, because he was going up, it would have been – our conversation about Keith Lee would be totally different. For sure. Yeah. So, and, and also just – he just said, man, th- th- that is one of the nicest human beings I ever met in my life. Like, and at, at his vocabulary and is – you little, can tell. It, but his vocabulary is so cool. I'll be talking to him like, Keith, I was tripping, but what you mean by like – uh, uh. Like he'll he'll say some like oh one of his big ass words and I'd be looking at him like like what you talking about bro like I you you know what I'm not even mad no more dog <laughs> like and that's the thing so he I, I would say Keith on the men's side definitely Keith um 
Oh my god, yeah, probably Keith, uh, Alistair Black, or Ricochet, definitely Alistair, like Alice, yeah. like Tommy. Listen, Tommy knows how much I love him, so it's like Alistair is one of the people where I feel like with the right, with the like in NXT, right? He had a title run, he had great storyline to NXT, but I feel like with Alistair with the right company behind him will be one of the biggest stars in your company. He just needs somebody to believe in him. Facts. Yeah. I definitely agree with that 100. percent Same. You mentioned um, you mentioned Bianca. I want to know because you seen like you was at you know they're watching on NXT, <clears throat> so you seen her early. But mm-hmm. did you like? I was, at her, I, was, I was at her first match, May Young Classic. Ooh. All right, so so you could really mm-hmm. you can answer this question then. Seeing Bianca then at her mm-hmm. first match and seeing her now. Did you always believe? Like, did you like the first time you seen her? Were you like, nah, she got something. Like, she's gonna be a star. I tweeted. I tweeted this the night one of Mae Young Classic. And I, I got the tweet to prove it. I did. Pull it I, up. I, Kidding. All right. Nah, I, I, nah, actually, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up for post. So if y'all want to put it on the right. screen and post, you can. <laughs> Bianca. Yeah. Be- I, I said that Bianca Belair was going to be the next big thing, and she was going to be a star. Granted, Bianca, that was her first match ever. Mm. I saw. I saw a woman do a 450. And I saw the way that she, she even did the hair swing against Kyrie and a lot of things that she did that I was like, I've never seen this before. Yo, she's different, but she was herself. She was a black woman. I was proud to be a black woman and carried herself as a black woman. And mm-hmm. I said, oh, nah. But the Bianca right now, Bianca's a generational talent. If Bianca said, I'm done wrestling tomorrow, she's one of the, she's a top five greatest woman wrestlers of all time. And if Bianca keeps on going for another X amount of years, she will be the greatest of all time. That's just how I feel. It has nothing to do with her skin color. Look at her resume. Chamber did that. Survivor Series, Soul Survivor, Royal Rumble, won that. SummerSlam, beat Becky. WrestleMania, double time. What's next? Like she, mm-hmm. She's done everything that, that can ever be done for a woman and has trailblazed for a lot of young black woman to come forward in the in the world for 10, 15, 20, 100 years to come, they'll mm-hmm. look at Bianca and it'd it be like, damn, put a statue up. Mm-hmm. Because what she's doing is, man, it's different. It's different. And it's like, Bianca six months ago is not as good as Bianca today. And it's like, like, like if you look at if you look at her match with Becky at WrestleMania and look at that match at, at SummerSlam, you're like, holy shit. Oh, god damn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at look at her first Sasha Banks uh, t- uh two years ago at WrestleMania. Look, oh my God, God. look at her promos six months mm-hmm. ago. And look at her promos now. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, like she, she she's literally she's literally in that that prime stage where Kobe went from eight to twenty four, mm-hmm. and like she's literally she's on a different planet, man. Like I, I I I think she's like I said this before. She's like LeBron in Miami right now, and that's just my opinion. All hits, no misses. All hits, no misses. That's God, a- did. That. God did. Hey. God did. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, I mean that that's that's my sister. So I'm always going to ride for her no matter what. But fact to fact, spade to spade, she is the best woman's wrestler in the world right now, and the best woman wrestler in the world is a black woman. Uh-huh. Tell me who else is gonna carry Otis's big ass on their back? <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> But, but the way she made it look easy, though, was like, it's like, hold on. Now. She picked him Gen- up like he was a generational <laughs> talent. Generational. We, yeah. would, we probably will never see nothing else like this as long as we are alive and our kids might not and their kids might not. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and mm-hmm. she's just different. And it's just like, it's not boot licking. It's like, man, when people are great, they're great. But when they're like, that caliber, the Michael mm-hmm. Jordans, the Kobe Bryant, the LeBrons, the Stephen Curry. So when you start being in that different cloud, like that top, mm-hmm. top, that top tier, you gotta give them their flowers. Because like with Kobe Bryant, a lot of people want to give him his flowers, but then unfortunately, when he, when he gets taken away from him, I think you're like, oh my god, no, hold on, I loved Kobe, hold on, no, I, I was just playing, I was just talking. No, you get them their flowers now, no matter what. So no, Bianca is the best woman wrestling, the best women's wrestler in the world. And hey, man, I, honestly, she's top five wrestlers in the world, period, right now. A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? I, the per, the woman I have is number one. She's not at work currently, so I can't make that debate right now. Is that but, her on your shirt? Baby? <laughs> that is her on my shirt right now. You it know is. what? Hey, but you know what? Mercedes too, bro. They're, they're pushing the envelope for people like us to do what we want to do and love what we love and man, never. No, no hate, no nothing. I, at the end of the day for Mercedes, man, I just want Sasha to be happy. As long as Sasha's happy, 
That's all that yeah. matters. Because wrestling is wrestling, but people are people. And I just want everybody to do their thing and be happy and love what they're doing. And that's all. I'm not I'm not gonna hold you. I definitely agree. Um this is the last last question I have. I don't know if my co-hosts have a question or any more questions, but the last questions I wanted to ask you is because you you're part of this, you know what I'm saying? You're part of this era of um of NXT. So I wanted to get your opinion on this. Um, Road Dog. Road Dog was on the I think the Corey Graves, the after the bell uh podcast. And he said an interesting quote that still sticks to me to this day. He said that if Adam Cole was carrying Cross's height and like built, he would already be WWE champion by now. And both of them were still in NXT at the time he's made that statement. So I wanted to get your opinion, someone that's around them and has way more insight than the average viewer of the product. So I see you laughing. I'm here. Yeah, because... <laughs> BG is crazy. Road Dog is crazy. That's my man, so he's crazy. But I love him. Good faith. Like he's man, he he's just he's crazy. Uh I'm an Adam Cole diehard, right? So him, he has been wrestling over the past X amount of months. It kills me as a wrestling fan because I love watching him work. The small details that Cole does, like facial expressions, the way that he cuts his promo, the way that he carries himself is different. Uh I feel like brother Adam Cole was six two, six three or Whatever he is, he's a he's a MF and superstar. So I feel like it. I, I feel I look at Ray Mysterio, one of the greatest of all times. Height, body stature, all that doesn't really matter. It's all about if 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 you're if you're in my company, what can I like? If I believe in you, like all right, Cootie, you're in my company, right? And I believe in you. It don't matter what you are. If I believe you and I know you can be a star, it is my responsibility to put you in that position. Because you can't control how tall you are, how long you are. You know, you can't control that. But it's all about me with the book that can put you in a position to succeed. Adam Cole can go to any company and be a champion. <clears throat> and not, not not like a mid card. He can be anybody's champion, like the, the face of a company. So it don't matter how, how – I'm not disagreeing with Road Dog. I'm just saying that Adam Cole don't need to be carrying across his body size to be WWE champion. And I'm pretty sure if Adam Cole would have, you know, if he felt comfortable enough to stay in WWE instead of going to AEW, he might have, he might have already been in the title picture already. Who knows? You're absolutely right. That's just me. I love I, that guy, though. I say the same thing, man. But hey, but I, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think the internet's more so just problematic when they seek negativity because that's what Twitter is about now. It's like it's yeah, so much, it's it, negativity. It, yeah, it's it's, yeah. It's, it's it's so much it's so much cooler to be negative. Like I posted a tweet the other day talking about Luke Harper from WrestleMania 33. I was like, I think he should have been in the triple threat match with Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt, and I think that he should have won. The amount of negative tweets that I got talking about somebody because he passed away, and it's like, wait, they were, and then somebody had the audacity to search Brody Lee and my name was like, you you only tweeted about him when he passed away. And I'm like, exactly. well, first off, you know, first off, this is beyond disgusting and disrespectful. And second of all, I'm like, I don't need to express myself for how much I love Luke Harper because anybody from Manny to anybody that who knows me acting mm-hmm. by Luke Harper, they know. But if you also search Luke Harper in my name, you'll see all the tweets. But it's just one of the things where it's just like Twitter, is that, that that's the belly of it right there. It's like, oh, you say some, I'm going to do, I'm going to quote retweet you to try to shit on you and try to make you look terrible because, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I want people to see that I dunked them. You know, I want other people to dunk you. I want to say I started it. No, you look goofy. You look Trash. goofy because then in the, in the same span they'll turn around a week later and talk about mental health and how how important it is. Bing. Mm-hmm. Right there. So true. And those are the same people. It's just like a mirror reflection, honestly. It's how they feel about themselves, so they want other people to feel the way that they feel. Yep. And but, they'll uh, go to whatever length that they can to to do that. But mm-mm-mm. fact, and I mean, hey, I mean, <laughs> people always say, oh, like somebody has said, oh, like you you don't. You rarely ever talk negative about WWE. It's like, oh, I'm not talking about a negative enough for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, so, so you want me to? Be, but they was like, oh, but you take you take a shot to AEW every chance you get. No, if I like something, I can like it. If I don't, I can say I don't. I don't have no problem with AEW's product. But if I say I don't like it, like the other day, for instance, like for the finish for the Riddle and Seth finish in the main, I didn't like that finish with Elias get the head. But I'm like, oh, that was that was goofy. But do I need to be on social media like this is stupid? No, but do I go on Twitter and say this is tweeted by AEW? No, why? Because I'm a professional and I respect people's crafts. I can have my own opinion, but I'm, like going on Twitter and calling your product stupid is going to do what for who? Nobody. Because AEW not going to look at it. They don't give a damn about me. 
and, and and the people who follow me, they're gonna be like, oh, okay, scroll. It don't matter. So, period. Exactly. This, this hey, brother man. knows what he's talking about, man. And exactly. It's just, hey, man. It's just some people, man. They just they. Unfortunately, people got stuff going on in their own on the, within their own self that they feel negative about it. So, unfortunately, they cast it on other people, and you ain't gonna cast your negativity on me, my friend. I can tell you that right now. You feel me? Hey, ooh, I, <laughs> don't feel me. That smell good. Ooh, that's, come on, that's, that's, that's smell good. Hold on, that's money. Oh, I mean, that's money. Three days. That's it. Yeah. Hey, hey, say that one more time. What? That's the that's the new harness. Yeah. <laughs> God right did, there. yes sir. God <laughs> did. <laughs> Before we get out of here, man, can you please let the people know where they can find you? Well, no. First off, don't find me. If you're not following the Black Announce Table, please make sure you are. Uh, and please make sure that you uh, like, uh, share, retweet, do all the good things. Tweet positive, pre- tweet positively about them. Um, and I'll just tweet more positive stuff in general. God dang. But anyways, uh, just make sure that you show them all the love and then some. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Cornell g 2 k I'm not going to lie to you. If you tweet me something about your opinion, I really won't care. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say what I got to say, and I'm going to keep it pushing. Uh, but always positivity and love to everybody. Uh, and thank you all so much for having me. 250. Like, yeah. you know, again, yeah. hey, hey. So in, so in about the your next anniversary, y'all going to be what? Three, y'all going to do 300 or 350? We're going to do 300. Yeah, so we're going to keep it 300. I, I got to come back for the 300. Mm-hmm. Hey, you got him. It's stamp, man. Got it. Coming back for three hundred. Yeah, I gotta come back for the three hundred, and I need to go find me a chief key shirt for the three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, now nah, that'll go crazy. A, a glory boy hey. shirt, bro. Listen, Keith. Yeah, right there in my heart. <laughs> bang bang, bang bang, right there in my heart. <laughs>